The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has been absolutely amazing. I still enjoy playing it now, two months after the Nintendo Switch and Breath of the Wild launch, and there's still more Breath of the Wild content to come, which is the DLC 1 and DLC 2 packs with lots more content to add to the game, which I'm definitely looking forward to. Today I'm going to be talking about my favourite things about Breath of the Wild and the things I find worst about Breath of the Wild. So, the first thing which is one of my favourite things about Breath of the Wild is the Paraglider. Yeah, that's right, the Paraglider. It may not seem like that an important item in Breath of the Wild, but having a Paraglider is so useful and so convenient in Breath of the Wild. Due to the massive landscape of Hyrule, all the big mountains, hills that you're going to be travelling throughout the overworld of Hyrule in Breath of the Wild, it's really good for when you're travelling from point to point, and for example you're at a height, and you want to get down to the ground but you'd have to somehow manoeuvre your way down a big mountain or down a big hill, you can just glide down as you can see in the clip there going off the Great Plateau as you do need it to get off the Great Plateau. Another way the paraglider can come in useful is in battle when you're battling enemies. For example battling Bacoblins at cliffside or at a cliffside and you're too weak to keep battling, you need an easy escape route, jump off the cliff and use your paraglider to get to safety. That is why the paraglider is so useful and so convenient for me in Breath of the Wild, and it's one of my favourite things about the game. The next thing that is one of my favourite things about Breath of the Wild is the enemies are actually a bit challenging in this game. Now, I'm not saying other Zelda games aren't challenging enemy-wise, but in Breath of the Wild, they've the enemies are a lot more difficult to fight than in previous Zelda games. For example, in previous Zelda games, a group of Bacoblins, or any sort of enemy, they don't group up on you and attack you in a group, they'd fight you one by one and the others would wait until either ones took you out or you took it out, which more than likely you would have took the Bacoblin out because they're not as hard as they are in Breath of the Wild. But in Breath of the Wild you have to think more tactically to take on groups of enemies, as you can see in the footage here, you have to take out guards just to get into their camps or else they will just blast you with arrows basically and they're all in there and then they just swarm out if you're spotted. You need to do everything pretty stealthy when dealing with big groups of moblins and bacoblins and any enemy really. The enemies are really challenging in this game for the overall enemies anyway and I think that's just such a good thing about Breath of the Wild because it makes the game so much more challenging than previous Zelda games where you can just sort of breeze through all the enemies. Of course there will be some challenging ones from time to time but in Breath of the Wild almost every enemy you encounter is difficult and the enemies actually get harder with more health and they can do more damage to you the more you progress in the game the more hearts you get and they change color that's how you can notice they go red blue black and silver i believe some people call it silver some people call it white i don't really know which one but i believe that's the order the enemy sort of ranking goes as and it's just so good how the enemies are actually a challenge in this game as i said it's nothing to say the other zelda games don't have challenging enemies but in this game, it does make you think a lot more about how you take on the enemies in Zelda. Now, my final favourite thing about Breath of the Wild for this video, because there's so many things that I love about Breath of the Wild, but for this video, the last thing is that there's a lot of side quests. There's a wide variety of side quests to do. From side quests which take you travelling across Hyrule from end to end, to side quests which make you bring two lovers together. Yes, that is a side quest in the game. Um, the side quests, just there's so many different side quests, there's one, there's quite a few of them, two, there's a wide variety of what you have to do in them, and they're just so enjoyable in Breath of the Wild. Some of my favourite ones are the ones where you have to go and just explore. I, I was going to name a certain one, but it's more just the factor of exploring is what I love about the side quests in this game, the ones that make you go travel long distances. I know this one's not as big a thing, but... Um, the side quests in this game are just really fun in my opinion. Now for the worst things in Breath of the Wild in my opinion. The first one is the Divine Beasts lack challenge and variety. This is not including the actual bosses of the Divine Beasts, but just doing the Divine Beasts. Now for one, the style of them is incredibly similar in all of them. They're all basically different animals with th that's it. They all have the same sort of design, textures, stuff like that. That's one thing that I didn't personally like about of the world and the divine beasts. Two, there isn't really any enemies inside of them at all. They're pretty empty, I guess you could say, and all the challenges inside them are pretty similar. You're just using one of your runes, more or less, to get through it and then that's you at the final boss of the dungeon. The bosses, 
that's something else to talk about, but we're not going to talk about that today. But the actual Divine Beast himself, I didn't find that challenging, and that was something that kind of disappointed me a little bit about Breath of the Wild, because these are the four main dungeons in the game, and they do lack quite a lot of challenge and variety for all four of them, really. But, I mean, entering them is a different case, because that is pretty fun, doing the little challenge to enter them, but once you're in it, they aren't really that challenging. That's something I think we can all agree on. The next thing that I found pretty bad in Breath of the Wild is, now I know this one's not as sort of a major thing, but there was no opponent in Breath of the Wild. Now come on, could you imagine travelling the absolute massive landscape of Hyrule on the iconic steed from The Legend of Zelda, Epona? How epic would that be, travelling through Hyrule Field, taking on guardians, just going through the grasslands of Hyrule on the iconic horse that is Epona. Now, as I said, this isn't that big a thing, or a bit that big an issue, but I really would have liked to see Epona in the game. Now, yes, I know you can get Epona through the amiibos, but I meant as in, as part of the game. In some way, almost fitting in part of the storyline, or just something small, maybe a side quest to earn Epona. I don't quite know how that would work with all the timeline stuff, but I'm sure Epona would fit into the game somehow without having to use the amiibo. That is something that disappointed me a, a little bit. But as I said, it's not that major an issue, but something I wanted to point out. Now, the last thing that I personally didn't like about Breath of the Wild was, you become way too overpowered way too quickly. Now yes, there is the first like hour or so within the Great Plateau, but once you're out of there and you get into the overworld, you can obtain weapons such as the Great Flame Blade, the Frost Blade, uh, the Thunder Blade, I believe that's the name for it, but these weapons are so overpowered, you've got the royal shield, you've got lionel bows, which shoot three arrows at once, only taking one off of your arrows basically. Now, as you can see in the footage here, I'm absolutely wrecking these enemies, and that is a silver moblin, the hard, or the best version of moblins, and I'm absolutely destroying it very easily, and with the champion's power, it is champion's abilities, it is just so overpowered. This is something that it doesn't so much bother me, but it's just something that's a bit disappointing that that kind of takes out the aspect of challenge. I mean, you do still have the sort of overall mini bosses, such as Hinox, but this did disappoint me a little bit. But Breath of the Wild is still an amazing game, despite all these things. And that's it for my favourite and worst things about Breath of the Wild. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more future Zelda related content, news, gameplay, discussions, and I can't thank you guys enough for watching the video. I know I've not been as, an ac as active if I s as I said I would be lately, but it's because I've got exams going on right now. I have my last one on Friday, which is in two days time, so after that I'll be getting back to our regular upload schedule, a few videos a week, that's all that good stuff. So until the next time, I've been Harold Gamer.